I myself had experience of um, older people um, in my life. Um, there was a wonderful lady called Iris who lived in my community. I've lived in the community for 33 years where I've lived. And um, even though it's in London, people always think London is anonymous and everything else, you know, it's a series of villages really. And where I've, I live, Iris was, used to be ballet dancer, she was 94. And there's a little cafe that, there that I've been going to since it opened about 25 years ago. And there were a few of us, including Iris. And uh, she was incredible because she, uh, she used to dress up. She, she wouldn't go out of the door unless she had all her makeup on. And, and as I say, she was 94 and she had nobody, actually. She had nobody at all. Um, she had a son who lived in Australia, I think. And she'd talk about him a lot with great pride and everything, but she never saw him. She never saw him and they weren't actually in contact. And we, we were kind of like her family, really, because we, we all kind of, you know, frequented this place. And um, they, she didn't have anyone, but she had us. And we used to take care of her. She had a, an accident once, she tripped over in the street. And, um, you know, immediately, it's, where's Iris? What's happened to Iris? You know, how is Iris? And, and we went to visit her in hospital. I remember I took my daughter, who, when she saw her in hospital, was uh, very upset. Um, but uh, people like Iris and also um, having lived in the community for so long, there are, there are people I've known who have got older and, and I've realised that they, some of them, you know, never leave their house and they never see anyone. So you just become aware of how cut off people can become. And in Iris's case, uh, when she died, there was no, you know, she had no one. I said her son actually didn't come over for the funeral. And uh, so it was all of us who organised her, um, you know, her funeral and we all went. And uh, when she had had the accident, she got home, she couldn't come out again. Um, so we used to make sure that she was, she was all right. Um, you know, that's a particular case, but what we can learn from things like that is to look out for people in your community and uh, be aware of them and be aware of people who, um, who are always on their own and to think about those who you don't actually see, but might be stuck at home. Um, I think we just have a duty of care, really, to older people, um, because it's all too easy to become isolated and to, to, to you know, go day to day and see no one. You know, Iris was, was lucky in a way because uh, we all loved her and, uh, and, you know, she had us. And, you know, if anything happened, we'd all rally round, but not, Many older people are as fortunate as that. And I just think it doesn't take much for us to, to be aware of somebody who might be behind closed doors, um, not seeing anyone, not hearing anyone's voice. You know, just to, to be aware of that and to look out and to think of little, little things you can do to help them.